Hello, this is John Sifferman here, and in this video I'll be demonstrating a beginner level joint mobility prehab routine to help with runner's knee. So please follow along as best you can. Just going to go through a series of exercises. We're going to start with um, just a basic pelvic range of motion exercise. Going to start by tucking your pelvis forward as if a dog is tucking its tail under or between its legs. And then you're going to reach your tailbone back behind you, rounding your lower back, arcing your lower back, like so. And back forward again, tuck it all the way under. And then back, one more forward, and then back. Then we're going to do the same movement but side to side, so you're going to tilt your pelvis to one side and then tilt it to the other side, kind of like a hula dancer would do, just a little bit slower. And you're going to go to the tension, not through the tension, so you're not forcing any range of motion here. Now we're going to combine those two movements, so we're going to tuck forward, slide off to the side, reach backward, arcing your lower back, and then off to the other side, and then tucking forward again. Just continue that circle for a couple more repetitions, smoothly and slowly, all the way back forward, and then we'll reverse the direction. So we'll go off to one side, reach it all the way back, to the other side, and then forward for a couple more circles. Just move smoothly and slowly to your range of motion. Now we're gonna do a, uh, another basic hip range. We're just gonna press our hips forward, not just the pelvis, but really press your hips all the way forward, rounding out your hip flexor muscles. You'll feel a stretch probably in the front here. And then you're gonna reach your tailbone backwards behind you and squat down as far as you're comfortable, just reaching your hips far back behind you. Your weight might transfer onto your heels a little bit. And you're gonna press forward again all the way forward and back. For one more, forward and back. We're gonna do the same thing on the side now. It's called a side hip root. We're gonna swing our hips off to the side, pressing that hip um, back at an angle. And you can reach your arms in the opposite direction for balance and then come back up. We'll go to the other side, pressing the hips off to the side, kind of like angling your hip up at a 45 degree angle and you can reach off to the opposite side for balance. And then you're just gonna do two more reps. You can clasp your fingers and make a pistol um, to get a little bit deeper into the range of motion if it's comfortable. And that's it. Now we're gonna turn those two ranges of motions, the forward and backward, and the side to side into a circle. So press your hips forward, slide off to the side, get down deep, root deep into that side hip root. Reach your tailbone back, sliding to the back into this uh, partial squat position, then press your hips off to the other side, and then press them all the way forward. That's the hardest part. Then slide all the way around for one more circle, reaching your hips back, pressing to the opposite side, all the way forward, and we'll do one more circle all the way around, smooth and slow, to whatever range of motion you have for today, and we'll reverse the direction, so go to the other side, reach all the way back, the opposite side and forward. It's best to do all of these exercises barefoot because you get the best balance, but it's certainly okay to do them in footwear. And we'll just do one more circle. I lost count. I'm just aiming for three reps in the demonstration video, but you can do three to five reps or even perform the exercises for up to a minute at a time. Um, next exercise most people are familiar with just a standing leg swing. I'm gonna have you do them a little differently. You're gonna lock your knee, pull your toes back towards your shin, and just raise your leg as high as you can, um, as is comfortable for you. Height is not important. Maintaining that knee lock is important. So come up in front, and then reach all the way behind you. Again, keeping that knee lock, keeping those toes pulled back. Just gonna do a couple more smoothly and slowly at first. And then you can relax your leg, and swing it a few times for a more dynamic range of motion drill. Again, if you're on one leg and you're having trouble balancing, that's okay, just grab onto something for support. Um, gonna get all the benefits out of the exercise. So get a firm uh, stance with the other leg now, knee locked, toes pulled back, and you're gonna go all the way up, all the way back, as far as your range of motion allows, just for a few, and then loosen your leg up a little bit and make it more of a, a dynamic swing to get a little bit deeper 
into the range of motion. I'm going to do a similar swing just off to the side now, so get a good stance, hold on to something if you need to. Um, again, keep the knee locked, keep the toes pulled back if you can. We're going to go off to the side, height is not important, maintaining the knee lock is important. And then you're going to cross the leg across your center line, like so, as far as you can go, off to the side, and then this time you're going to go behind your leg, across your center line. So that's one, across, to the side, behind, to the side, across, to the side, behind, to the side. And then we're going to do a, a more dynamic one, so same foot, we're just going to swing the leg from side to side, a little bit more loosely, like so. You can kind of shake out your leg uh, to release some tension. We'll do the same thing on the other side. So get a firm footing, lock the knee, pull the toes back, uh, raise the leg to the side as far as you're comfortable. Don't force it. Try and maintain your posture as best you can. And then cross in front of you, back off to the side, and then cross, cross behind you. To the side, like so. And just smooth it out. Try and maintain your posture. Hold on to something if you need to, like so. And then we'll do the more dynamic swing too on this side. Just a little bit more loose, get a little bit deeper into that range of motion, like so. You can shake out your legs uh, to get rid of some of that tension that built up. Now we're going to work on a, a rotation exercise for the hip, so get a firm stance, raise one leg, knee locked, toes pulled back, and you're going to rotate your leg externally away from you and then internally trying to point your toes towards your other foot if you can and then rotate externally opening up the door and closing the door with your hip and just go as far as you're comfortable don't force it if there's any pain stop just do a you know a few reps and we'll switch to the other leg so knee lock toes pulled back rotate in rotate out like so just for a few. If you find that your uh, shoulders or your neck or your face are tense or you're gritting your teeth in a certain part of the range of motion, go a little shallower. It's okay. You can shake that leg out. Now we're going to do uh, a, a wide stance like so and we're going to uh, lean off to one side, squatting off to one side and rotate this other leg up, bringing, the, bringing your weight onto your heel and opening up that door again, doing that external rotation. So you're just going to squat off to one side and rotate the leg up, up and back, like so. Just for a few. Same thing on the other side now. Make sure I'm centered in the camera. Just squat to one side, externally rotate this leg back. So you're putting a little bit of weight, you're adding a little bit of a strength component to that deep range of motion, like so. We're going to do the same thing, only internally now. So this time you're going to get kind of into a lunge stance on your ball of foot in the back, slight knee bend in the front, and you're going to internally rotate towards your center line this rear leg underneath you. So it's, it's a subtle movement. Keep your knee locked to protect your knee. If there's any pain in your knee, don't do this one, avoid it. But you're going to internally rotate this rear leg underneath you. I'll show you a front angle too on the other side. So again, get into that lunge stance. Take that rear leg up on your ball of foot and internally rotate it, trying to point your knee beneath your forward leg. And you rotate back, internally rotate forward, like so. This gets a little bit deeper into that range of motion. You're gonna do a couple of mobility exercises for your knees too. We just spent a lot of time on the hips which is really important because hip tension and immobility often refers down to knee and ankle problems, which is a huge cause of runner's knee. But we're going to do the, the knees now. So get a hip width stance like so. And you're going to lock your knees all the way back and then swing them around in an arcing pattern until they touch in the middle or almost touch if you can't quite touch and then press them backwards all the way to lockout. So you're doing this, making this kind of arcing circle motion with your knees all the way around and then press them back to lock out in the back. We'll reverse that uh, direction. So we're going to try and touch your knees in the center, bring them forward and then arc them around in the back. Touch them in the center, bring them all the way around, 
full knee lock in the back. And last one, like so. We're gonna move off to uh, one foot now, so um, raise one knee up and uh, pull your toes back towards your shin and just lock the knee out in front of you. And then flex the knee, trying to touch your heel to your bum. Lock the knee, toes pulled back. Try and touch the heel to your bum. We'll do one more. Try to touch the heel to your bum. And the other side, raise the knee. We're gonna lock the knee with the toes pulled back. Touch the heel to the bum if you can. Just a basic knee range of motion exercise. Obviously the knee, its primary purpose is to flex and extend, but your knee also has a slight degree of rotation. So we're gonna do one more for the knees here. What you're gonna do is you're going to raise the knee to uh, about thigh parallel with the ground, and you're going to twist your foot uh, counterclockwise, or, or clockwise, we'll alternate between them, and then extend the knee forward until it's fully locked out, trying to maintain that internal or external rotation. So you're gonna maintain that, and then rotate the knee uh, the opposite direction, so turn it externally now, and extend the knee fully like so. So curl it in, go internally like this, externally like that, like so. And we'll go on the other leg too. You can kind of shake it out. So you get a good firm footing, raise the leg, and twist or, or rotate your ankle and your foot so it's pointing inwards, and then extend the knee while maintaining that internal rotation until you get fully locked out. This is a very tender range of motion for a lot of people. You can curl it back in. Now you're gonna turn your toes outwards, externally rotate them, and fully extend the knee. So if this is a really tender range of motion, go very carefully, you don't wanna harm your knees. Uh, then you can just alternate for a couple more reps, like so. You know, just be careful, use your head, don't hurt yourself, don't strain yourself. Go shallower if necessary. All right, so we're gonna finish up with what uh, is called the four corner standing balance drill. And um, so you're gonna start by just getting a firm footing on one foot and you're going to raise one leg, lock the knee, pull the toes back or you can point your toes if you'd like and it's gonna be lifted right in front of you like so and you're gonna hold this position for about 10 seconds Then you're gonna curl it in, rotate to the side and then raise the knee out to the side. You can pull the toes back or point the toes but keep that knee locked. Height is not as important as maintaining that knee lock. Then you're going to bring it in and press it backwards. So again, lock the knee. You can either pull the toes up towards your shin or point the toes and hold that for about 10 seconds. Each position, about 10 seconds or so. You're gonna come back forward, hold this position for about 10 seconds, lock the knee, pull the toes back. And then this last position, you can either cross the ankle over above your knee and kind of press on this raised knee, or you can bring your foot up higher into your lap, hold it in place, and then press on this raised thigh. Hold that for 10 seconds. I'm gonna lower your foot down, you can kind of shake out your leg. It's obviously a strength component here with the planted leg, and we'll do the other side. So just plant one foot, get a firm stance, hold on to something if you need to, raise the leg in front, pull the toes back, lock the knee for 10 seconds, bring it in, move it off to the side, Press it off to the side and you're trying to rotate your leg backwards here. So lock the knee, pull the toes back and kind of corkscrew it um, behind you if you can, but don't force it for about 10 seconds. Then again, you're gonna press it behind you, lock the knee, pull the toes back, lean forward to counterbalance yourself and hold that for 10 seconds. And we're gonna come back forward again, finally. Hold this position for 10 seconds. And then again, you can either cross the knee or cross the ankle over the knee and press on this raised knee or you can scoop your foot up into your lap and press on this uh, raised thigh. So that is the four corner balance drill. Again, you can shake out your legs and that would conclude the prehab routine for helping with runner's knee. Thank you and take care.